the big news story of the week. Hachu! It's cold up in the northern hemisphere. Winter storms and yes, actual blizzards swept across part of the U.S. and most of Canada. Brr. Yes, 2022 certainly went out with a blast. Of cold weather. And with cold weather comes... Cold and flus. <sighs> it's no fun at all getting sick, but there is some good and pretty big news on the cold and flu front. Like a real pucka scientific breakthrough about why we get them. And it's not just because you go out without a jacket on or daddy with wet hair in the cold. Not entirely anyway. Nor is it just that in winter we're all inside and so more likely to breathe each other's air and spread each other's germs faster. Nope. A group of scientists may have found one of the major biological reasons we get more respiratory illnesses in winter, as in illnesses that affect the lungs and other parts of the respiratory system. Turns out it's cold air itself that's the problem. Yep, it's the cold air because it damages the immune system's response in the nose. And you know what the immune system is, right? Yeah, like your body's ability to protect you from germs and viruses and creepy stuff like that. Right. It's the organs and other processes of the body that provide resistance to infection and toxins. So, according to the study published a few weeks ago in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, reducing the temperature inside the nose by as little as 9 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 5 degrees Celsius for our metric system, people. Thank you. Well, that colder air kills nearly half of the billions of virus and bacteria-fighting cells in the nostrils. Wait, what? All right, I forgot for a second that our body has lots of good bacteria and viruses, too. The ones that are actually like microscopic security guards fighting the bad bacteria and viruses that try to enter your body. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, in short terms, the study shows that cold air kills off half our biological security guards? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. But so far, this study has just been done using human tissue, but only in a lab. So it's still early days. Still, stay warm, people. Yes, but easier said than done for those poor folks stuck in winter storms all across the U.S. and Canada. Many of you have experienced your coldest Christmas on record. Brr. Yes, it's been super, super tough for thousands of people stuck in blizzards. Some even on Christmas Day. Yep, and now they're saying that millions of people are at risk of tornadoes, believe it or not, in the southeast as the winter storm threatens intense snow and dangerously icy conditions over in the Midwest. Yikes. But I believe this storm has brought out the best in people. Cue the sting, Mama. Kindness Corner. Cool. They did what? Seriously? What? How cool is that? No way. Cool. Yes, the stories just keep pouring in of people's kind, heroic, and generous deeds. First shout out goes to Jay Withy in Buffalo, New York, which is in the northeast of the U.S., by the way, bordering Canada. He set out to help a friend trapped in the blizzard, but got stranded himself knocked on doors of 10 houses seeking shelter for the night. Even offering $500 to sleep on the floor, but was refused. Then two other stranded people approached him and gave him shelter in their truck. But then he saw a school and had an idea. No, he did not want to study. He broke a window and told his new friends to join him inside. But he didn't stop there. Nope, he went back out into the storm, finding more people in need of shelter. 24 total strangers, in fact. They survived for nearly two days, including Christmas Day, on apples, juice, and granola bars. Oh, it chokes me up, actually, these kind of stories. Okay, also in Buffalo, there was a generous barber, Craig Elston, who saw the Arctic storm getting worse and told his last clients of the day to stay put. He also welcomed those desperate for shelter passing by. But he didn't stop there. He went on social media and invited anyone in the area seeking shelter to come on over. Uh-oh. 
Here's the tissue, Mama. Oh, gosh. These stories really get to me. They touch me. Okay. And then there was the McDonald's, also in upstate New York. On a street called Sweet Home Road, no less. That's true. Well, they ended up giving shelter... And Big Macs. ...to over 50 people on Christmas Day. And then there were the 10 South Korean tourists who spent Christmas with a New York family whose door they knocked on when they were seeking help. And now let's not forget my favorite, the cat lover who rescued a partially frozen kitten in Michigan. You know, the world is way more full of good than bad. We mustn't ever forget that. And in these cases, it takes heartwarming to a whole new level. What's that? I'll tell you what, that's the halftime bell, which means it's time to hear what's making news around the rest of the world. Hold on tight. It's Around, around the, the World, world in, in 80, 80 Seconds. seconds. Hold The U.S. House of Representatives is in chaos after failing to choose a new leader called the Speaker of the House. This comes after the Republicans gained more seats than the Democrats in an election, meaning they get to choose the Speaker. But so far, the nominee, Kevin McCarthy, isn't getting enough votes. And while it might be cold in so many parts of the U.S., in Europe, temperatures have reached an all-time high. It's 66 degrees Fahrenheit in Poland, which is usually covered in snow in winter. And in Spain, it's a balmy 77 degrees. Tens of thousands of people are in the Vatican City to pay tribute to the former Pope Benedict, who's lying in state ahead of his funeral. The German led the Catholic Church for eight years before becoming the first pope in nearly 600 years to step down in 2013. And scientists at the UK's Natural History Museum revealed some of the new animal and plant species they've uncovered in 2022, including frogs the size of a coin, 19 species of stick insects, and 84 beetles. Experts hope that by giving them scientific names, they can be better protected. Thank you so much for that. Of what's making headlines elsewhere in the world, Mama. Lottie, in case you missed that, she said whippity wappity zippity zaplo. I have actually missed that while we took a break. All right, you're most welcome, Leela. And now for a rather nail biting story coming out of Australia. You said it. Dozens of students in a public school in the big city of Sydney in Australia were banned from an end-of-year ceremony because... Wait for it. Because they were wearing false fingernails, long acrylic nails. Which is against the school dress code that all the kids and their parents had been well informed of. But, yeah, seems a bit harsh that the girls were stopped from entering the hall for the final year 10 assembly. And put in two classrooms at the back of the school. Not just that either. None of these girls were mentioned at the ceremony. And a lot of them had awards to receive, too. Many of the girls had had their nails done for a big dance the week before. And since there was another big function a few days later, they didn't want to change them. Needless to say, the kids and their parents are not Happy. And now nails are a hot, or should I say brittle, topic around the country. By the way, speaking of nails, did you know that acrylic nails were actually invented by a dentist? What? Yep. In 1954, the dentist Fred Slack broke a nail and created an acrylic nail as a temporary replacement. He knew he was onto something, perfected the concoction, and voila. And finally, let's see what the Lucky Dim Machine has lined up for our final story today. Step right up, step right up, step right up. Have a go at the Lucky Dim Machine. The Lucky Dim Machine. What's it going to be today? today, eh? An oddball, no doubt. An oddball, no doubt. Oh, yes, this is not your normal story. At least not for the subject matter. Uh, Okay. So, you know how you go to the hair salon and there's tons of, well, hair being swept up from under the floor? Sure. Swept up and thrown away because, yuck, who wants old hair? Yeah, totally. 
Well, the hair recycle project in Belgium do, actually. Oh? Yep, they're staking out hair salons across the country and asking to back up and take away those stray strands of hair. Why? Turns out human hair is pretty good at absorbing oil and other hydrocarbons, polluting the environment. I did not know that. Neither did I. Well, here's how it works. They feed these locks and tresses into a machine that turns them into matted, kind of creepy looking squares that can be used for all sorts of things. Like, please don't say pillows. <laughs> yeah, goose down or feathers are fine. Human hair, ick. These eco warriors put human fluff to better use. These squares can be placed in drains to soak up pollution in the water before it reaches a river. Clever. Or they could just be turned into bags. You know, like jute bags. Only made of us, not the jute plant. I guess matted into a thread, the hair wouldn't look so creepy, but it could make shopping a, you know, hair raising experience. <laughs> And it's time to wrap up the podcast with the, the top, top five, five facts, facts heard today. today. Fab fact number one. Scientists may have found the biological reason we get more respiratory illnesses, which is what? Illnesses that affect the lungs and other parts of the respiratory system. Fab fact number two. It's the cold air that causes a lot of colds because it actually damages the immune response of the nose. And your immune system is the organs and other processes of the body, providing what to infection and toxins? Resistance. Fab fact number three. Winter storms grip the U.S. and Canada this holiday season with many heartwarming tales of heroism and generosity coming out of upstate New York in particular. Where in the U.S. is New York State? In the Northeast, bordering Canada. Fab fact number four. A school in Australia banned some students from attending an end-of-year event because wearing acrylic nails. A guy called Robert Slack invented acrylic nails in 1954. What was his profession? He was a dentist. Fab fact number five. <laughs> Human hair is being recycled in Belgium to help protect the environment because hair is very good at absorbing what? Oil and polluting hydrocarbons. And don't forget, if you want to test yourself later on, then go to the Lucky Dip page of our website. That's newsypalooza.com and take this quiz online in your own time. And that almost brings us to the end of this episode of Newsy Palooza. But first, I have to share a huge highlight of last year with everyone. So most listeners probably know that I'm a huge, huge fat Taylor Swift fan, which means I'm also a fan of 13 at Taylor Swift Fan Podcast. Highly recommended for any Swifties. Subscribe now. Well, I had to write in and tell them what a fan of their podcast I am. And then this happened. Before we go, I do want to read this email that we got. This might be the cutest email I've ever seen. She says, hi, I'm Leela the 10-year-old host of the Newsy Paloozy podcast, which is a fun world news for curious kids. Oh, my God. 10 Adorable. years old. How impressive is that? Yeah. Wow. Who is editing your podcast? Are you editing it? Or are you just rolling on through? I am impressed regardless. That is very cool, Leela. But she said, um, so that's, again, Leela, 10-year-old news host of the Newsy Paloozy podcast. Mm -hmm. So go check her out. But she says, I love Taylor Swift. I absolutely love her music. I'm a big cat lover, too. And lover was in called all caps. And she said, see what I did there? <laughs> when I found your podcast almost a year ago, I immediately subscribed. I love listening to all your different opinions and seeing who I agree and disagree with in your rankings. I want to know, Leela, did you mean Amy or not? <laughs> like, where, who, exactly? She said, I love your podcast so much that I am re- 
listening to old episodes in the middle of the weeks, and it's so funny to see everyone talking about karma theories and your guesses of what's next before Midnight's came out. That's so funny. Plus, since I am half Indian, half American, and I live in India, not many people really know about Taylor. So when I heard Betty playing on a restaurant, you can guess how happy I was. I love your podcast so much. By Leela. Leela, I am going to hit subscribe on your podcast as well, Newsy Paloozy Podcast. OMG, made my year. Thank you, 13 and Taylor Swift Fan Podcast. Seriously, you really made her day and mine too. Year, year. You made my year. <laughs> If you enjoyed this dip in the pool of news and information, then tap that subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. And while you're at it, why not tell a friend about us too? Go on, spread the love, and spread the wacky world news. Alrighty then, we'll see you next week in the giant happy splashy Nizzy Paloozy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.